I remember telling my sister, you know, we need to run away. But she told me, we can't be running away every time. The other time we were beaten. Maybe this time they'll do something worse to us. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm 10 years, you're 8 years. So maybe if I agree to undergo the cut, they will leave you. My story started when I was seven years old. That's when I lost my parents. And I had to move and start living with my grandfather, me and my sister and my elder brother. My time reached. Our uncle came to our, uh, to our grandfather's place because he has already planned to circumcise me and my sister. So when we went to a boarding school, is now when I started hearing circumcision is not done to every girl. Because before I really thought it's done to every girl in Kenya. And that's when I decided that I don't think it's something I want to, to, to agree with or I don't think it's something that I would really want uh, to undergo. And I started talking to my sister and I told her, you know what, we really need to run for a rescue because I thought I would die or if I don't die again, uh, I'll be married to an old man who is not even my choice. We walked outside our uncle's homestead. We could not use the main road because we were worried. What if they find us there? You know, what will they do to us? So we were walking throughout the bush and we walked to our mother's sister's place, which was about 17 kilometers. After a week or so, and a group of men came because they realized we were there. My uncle told us, you see, there's no way you are going to run from the, the cart. It's a must. FGM. FGM stands for female genital mutilation. According to the World Health Organization, is the removal of any genital parts or any part of the genital organ for non-medical reasons. So you're cutting a place that is not supposed to be cut, so you're destroying it. You're mutilating that part. When we closed schools, it came for us again. And again, I was trying to tell people that I don't want to undergo the cut, but no one would agree. They thought it's really crazy because they were like, you are born in this village, you understand the Maasai culture. Why do you want to go against it? And you know very well, you cannot be accepted by your own community or by this community if you have not undergone the cut. This has never happened here. This is a very big shame that you brought to us. You've never seen any girl who has not undergone circumcision in this village, and you'll not be the first one. And I kept postponing until now. I sat down with my grandfather saying that, you know, I want to go to school, or I will go and never come back. And that's when he realized, I think this girl is serious. And he called my family, he called people from my community, and he said, let's leave her. That's how I was left alone, and that's how I was saved from circumcision. My sister really sacrificed herself to undergo the cut for me to be left out. It's still one of the hard moments for me up to now because uh, I really wanted to help her. I really wanted to find a way of going and telling the women and telling everyone in the community that she be left alone. But then again, I called it because if I went there, they will circumcise me forcibly. So uh, she was not lucky. She got circumcised and later she got married. And it has been hard because every time I'm like, I wish I could help her, I wish I could do something for her, but uh, I was not able. I could not do it for her, but I have to do it with the other girls. I had to come back to the same village and try and make change. So if that's what I want, I cannot make the change alone. I need allies, I need to talk to other people. That's when again I met with AMREF, uh, Health Africa in Kenya. So for the last... Almost six years now, I've been doing that together with the support of AMREF and community people. And we've been able to reach over 16,000 girls who are now women without the cut. And the most important thing is that they are in school because our work is to make sure, again, there's transition and completion 
of these girls in school because it's only through education that we can change people, that we can change the world. And that's my hope. When you come into a society, there are those uh, already inbuilt structures. We do not purpose to change them. We work with them. Like now we come and find the cultural elders here, past the influencers of the community, and uh, passed on the information on with regard to FGM, child marriage and teenage pregnancies, and also sexual reproductive health and rights. Once all that has been done for one and a half years, then now you challenge the community to give you an outcome. Let's have something in the place of FGM. ARP stands for Alternative Right of Persons. And uh, when a community decides that uh, they have understood the effects of FGM, why it is not acceptable in society, why their daughters should not go through FGM, then the community resolves not to do it anymore. And then now they decide to have an alternative instead of a vacuum. The process to this particular ARP in Olentoko Primary School uh, began in 2016. We take five days as the Yes I Do Alliance. Two days, these boys are being trained in school. We like reorient ourselves for the first two days, Monday and Tuesday of the week, on what we have been learning or what they have not been taught on. And we talk about FGM, we talk about sexual reproductive health, sex and outcomes of sex, you know? Understanding their body, how it functions, how it's changing, the changes and what it means and how they should take care of them at that time. Then the, the two days that follow, Wednesday and Thursday, we also engage the girls, understanding their bodies, healthy relationships, you know, their rights as girls, their rights as children. Uh -huh. What we are encouraging the Maasai community to abandon is the harmful traditional practices, but we ask them to uphold their beautiful culture. have the celebrations where the community now joins the girls and the boys in celebrating them having passed through alternative rite of passage without the cuts. She want to acknowledge our uh, let girls be girls. Our mission as AMREF is to bring female genital mutilation to an end by 2030. You know, we are starting up an African movement. We are also going to those places and making sure that we are saving our girls, we are saving our women and all that. So I can't keep quiet until we bring uh, female genital and child marriage to an end. That's my hope for the future. <laughs> Hello, you. 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 Hello,
it empowers the girls to uh, hold to, to, to enhance their self-esteem because among the Ma communities women don't have a voice <laughs> Beautiful. Yes, okay, very good. Nice one. I like that. Kuja Christine, Pande If it were the I am very good. I would love to see every girl live their dream. These girls, these boys have potential. They have talent that if nurtured can bring them to a level where they can stand on their own and become stars. <laughs>